I'd like to call to order this public hearing on FY17 proposed budget. But the board has in front of them a packet, and the first part of the packet includes the general operating budget um, and a comparison between fiscal year 16 and fiscal year 17. And the second part of the packet includes the actual uh, required way of publication in the newspaper. And today is our official public hearing. We're asking the board to adopt um, the uh, fiscal year 17 proposed budget. And we saw a draft on February 18th, and we started this fiscal year um, with the goal of addressing a fund balance uh, that has declined from fiscal year 10 from 6.5 million to fiscal year 15 of 2.6 million. We want it to address consistent revenue shortfalls, which this budget does. We have um, made sustainable expense cuts. We want it to balance our revenue and expenditures in our baseline budget. And we've made progress in closing that revenue gap from 3.3 million to 2.7 million, um, which is not as, as good as we wanted it to be, but a lot of that is um, indirectly affecting us because of the state's budget. Uh, we established priorities for savings. We reduced a 1 million carryover in order to balance our budget to an 850,000 carryover. And we also increased our reserve from a half a million to $800,000 in this budget. We are trying to manage our growth proactively by uh, attrition and preparing for retirement and the impacts of retirement before they happen by more logically distributing funds. Um, for example, maybe not just allocating a flat dollar to people, but maybe having a rationale for number of students to a school and trying to uh, do our uh, formulas in that way. We also uh, had a priority of funding instruction versus operation and, and administration, which we made 400,000 uh, worth of cuts, 400,000 at the central office level. This budget includes 20 additional positions. 19 of them are direct instruction related positions. Uh, we, we also, it also includes a half a cook and a half of custodian. Uh, we had a number of surveys out there and we wanted to address some of our staff feedback and they had um, 10 top priorities. One was to cut the Board of Education and or the Central Office um, Administration, which we did to about 400,000. We reduced extended contracts as of today um, 114 days. We did reduce for principal contra contracts by um, looking at Blue Ridge and um, replacing uh, an assistant pr a principal with an assistant principal position. Conduct registration and other practices electronically. We did convert that. We reduced travel um, by approximately $11,000 in this budget. Uh, change schedules and redistricting. Uh, we are working on that. And uh, offer the retirement buyout. We did that. We had approximately eight professionals and four service um, with a savings of 20000 for a professional and 10000 for a service position. We centralized bulk purchasing of paper and agendas. Um, we're estimating approximately a 5% savings for doing that. Number nine was to reduce waste. Uh, we're, we're doing that by uh, migrating our regular lighting to LED and reduce expenditures on our public relations, which we reduced that by $4,200. Staffing, this budget includes um, positions for staffing of um, 750 
5.5 professional positions and 509.9 um, FTEs for service for a total of 1,260.25, 1, which is an increase of the 20.60 over um, fiscal year 16. Nine of those positions were conversions from special education contracted to employees. Um, if you look at your handout, I wanted to review the revenue from um, fiscal year 16 to fiscal year 17 and the changes. Taxes, uh, we see approximately a 4% increase in our total tax line item budget. It's the um, highest increase in assessed values that we've seen in a number of years. Uh, our state aid formula can see an, an actual decrease of um, 139,000, and that's an inverse relationship between assessed values and our state aid given to us by the state. When our taxes go up, our um, state aid decreases. Um, this, this budget includes 45% is covered by our tax total taxes and 49% is covered by total state aid contribution. Um, this budget, which wasn't in our February 8th draft, includes a increase in our PEIA <coughs> employer premiums uh, of about 900,000 and that covers the uh, employees who are within the formula. Um, so the revenue is generated by that. We had to make up the difference on the other end for the expenses of employees who are not covered in the formula. This budget includes an additional 50,000 decrease in Medicaid. Um, so from, I think, 2010 to today, our Medicaid budget has gone from 650,000 to an estimate of 250,000. We recently finished a um, a desk audit for our fiscal year 15. Our county was selected or chosen um, to do a desk audit for the new uh, calculation of Medicaid, and that was completed, I think, last week. And we hope to hear uh, the uh, the results for our fiscal year 15 Medicaid. So, hoping for a receivable. The trend seems to be that they are kind of. Uh, eliminating any Medicaid, re Medicaid reimbursable services from the state or making it so difficult to um, get it that it's going to be not worth the time that it takes to do it. We did increase our carryover number by $350,000 um, from the February 8th. Um, and we also increased our reserve. That is basically a contingency for um, any additional state cuts that may come from um, the, the session that the legislature is in, um, which would, will ease any more cutting for this year. Any questions on the revenue? Expenses, start with salary and benefits. Uh, our, our salary line item increased by 2.3 million, uh, which seems like a lot, but built into that number is um, a $550 uh, pay increase for every professional and an average of a 340 pay increase for every service personnel. That in itself is probably close to 700,000 and it also includes the additional 20.6 positions. So um, to increase only 2.3% on salaries is, is pretty significant. Um, salary supplemental, one of the ways uh, we are, have trimmed are on our uh, additional supplemental pay and our overtime. We trimmed that about 16% or an equivalent of $206,000 in order to meet this budget. That's basically across the entire school system. All departments and all managers have looked at overtime and supplemental pay 
sometimes taking on the responsibility themselves and um, sometimes trying to figure out how we can get it done within a regular work day. Substitutes, we do have a 4.9% increase. Um, some of that trending um, on regular substitute costs for sick, um, but there is also an increase built in in order to accommodate our focus for professional development in fiscal year 17. Health, dental, and vision, we did a really good job with a net increase of 2%, um, or I'm sorry, 2.1%. Dental, I think we had a 6% increase on the admin fees only, not on the, the claims. Vision, I think we maintained uh, a steady rate. And worker co workers' comp, which is the next line item down, like, down uh, we actually had a reduction in our workers' comp premiums of 5%, which is uh, pretty significant. Retirement, um, most of that is from our older retirees leaving. So currently, if you are in the old retirement system, there's a 15% match by the employer. Or I'm sorry, uh, the old, uh, if you're in the old retirement, we do match your retirement 15%. The newer employees, we match at 7.5%. Um, so that reduction is mostly from younger employees coming on and not being in the older retirement system. Any questions on salaries and benefits? Non-salary -sal expenditure line items, um, professional services includes contracted services, um, primarily a decrease in our special education services, uh, moving those uh, contracted services to qualified teachers uh, line item um, that also includes uh, a ninety thousand dollar increase for our pre-k collaborative contracts uh, meeting those goals from the state for collaborating with our pre-k pre program other services this line item um, changed from your two eight board meeting and it went from a um, negative 55,000 um, to a positive um, let me see where I'm to less yeah to less of a negative because uh, Mr. Mike Davis bid out our cell phone a wide area network and local and long distance and I know that he came and spoke to the board. That total budget to budget was $136,000 savings. Supplies. Supplies um, has an 8.3% decrease. Um, the majority of that coming from our previous excess levy and the decline of a million dollars um, in that levy. Our school allocations were cut, um, keeping in mind that the priorities were people and not papers and paper and pens. Um, in addition, in that line item is also utilities, um, electricity, which um, we don't hear a lot about, but for the past five years, we've maintained almost a flat line electric bill, even though we've grown tremendously. And I think that that is from our maintenance department and Mr. Dingus, um, their initiative to migrate all of our school system to LED lighting from all the different, I think it's mercury vapor and incandescent and some other kind of lighting that we have that are very exp expensive on our electric bill. Um, back pay, that increase comes from our uh, lease. We uh, lease out the second part of our bus garage we make net we have to pay taxes on that now because it's not directly rated, related to um, instruction however even after paying the taxes on it we are receiving over a hundred thousand dollars annually in additional revenue and then the last line item is our contingency and from February 8th we did increase that um, to eight hundred thousand 
for two reasons. Number one, um, we are expecting a state cut or something to come down from when the legislation comes out of uh, session. Um, so we'll have that reserve in there. And then secondly, on our tax revenue, even though this is the highest increase we've seen in years, um, we've also seen a higher uncollectible rate than we have in years. So for our fiscal year 17, when we adopted our new levy rates, we used an accounts receivable rate of 5%. And currently, we are at 96% collections for fiscal year 16. So it appears that we may not meet our budget for 16. And we are doing this conservatively so that we already know that we have a 5% collection rate in 17 that if we also can't meet that collection, we'll have a reserve to cover it. Um, when 18 rolls around, if that trend holds true, we will probably increase our collection rate to 6%, which means that since I've been here in 12 years, it's gone from a 2.5% uh, collection rate or accounts receivable where we're not collecting to 6%. And that's in summary. I did want to mention that this, this budget focuses on our general operating budget, which is $88 million. But we also have a special revenue um, budget, which is about $12 million. It includes uh, your federal programs, special education, title, your title programs, your child nutrition department, and it also includes special revenue from the state, um, which we hear about step seven, which is primarily an instructional budget. Uh, your special revenue funds are self-balancing, and we also have a debt service uh, fund. It covers two line items. Um, the first is the voter-approved um, bond, $19 million bond that's um, for the renovation to Jefferson and the building of Washington High School. That bond is in the payment of that for ne next fis fiscal year. And it also this year will include a um, payment, debt payment for our bus garage, which is approximately $295,000 annually. Any questions? What did our last numbers end up being, our final numbers, as far as our student population increase or decrease for this year? Do have those yet? Um, we have increased enrollment numbers. I'm thinking that they increased 80, I want to say 86. Okay. Okay. And wasn't last year we were like negative or okay, five? I knew it was quite significantly different, but okay. I don't know if I'm going to call it a trend, but in the 12 years that I have been here, we've had um, up to or close to a 2% growth in student enrollment. In fiscal year 2012, we grew a negative three, and in fiscal year 15, we grew five. Um, so it's enough to make sure that we watch that number because it's now happened three times or twice in a 12 year period. Um, and our increased enrollment number is always budgeted very conservatively. At, I think it's 250000 in this, this budget. I can't remember off the top of my head. But typically, if we grow at our normal rate, and even if we don't grow at a normal rate, it's a conservative number that we would could adjust. And as a bit of a harbinger, our preschool program, we have been required to add preschool locations and classes because of the number of preschool enrollments that we've had. So as a piece of trend data, we fully expect that we'll have greater growth. Than well. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the FY17 proposed budget pending state board approval? Move. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Pending state board approval.
Board of Education for May 23rd, 2016 at 7 uh, We have uh, Dr. Ross and some fine people from Jefferson High to lead us in our play. Yes, sir. I'd like to introduce Cadet Colonel Cole Devine. Cadet Major Mariah Daffron and Cadet Chief Master Sergeant Madeline Sagey from the Jefferson Air Force Junior ROTC to lead you in this evening's pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have recognitions, and we need to amend our agenda in that area. Yes, sir. Um, I have a uh, recommended uh, uh, agenda change for the board number one to add recognitions for both the golden horseshoe recipients and the regional and state and national mouth math field day participants and to remove from the agenda item four which was a scheduled presentation of the wildwood water watcher club who mr block are you introducing these yes. Okay. Is there a motion to amend the agenda as mentioned? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Mr. Mr. I need to come up up with our presentation here for the math field day. <laughs> Exactly. Those math geniuses are the strong silent types. <laughs> <laughs> Although when it came time to perform, they certainly shone. So we appreciate it. Come on in. There's plenty of room. We want to make sure Spot we see all of you there. and honor all of you. Please do. You can come on up front, honey. Come on. Slide on in here. Yeah. We want you here. Please. 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 Do after we call your name and get your certificate, you can circle around the, the board table here for, for a group picture. It seems to have we generally do this. And the first person that gets her name called and go right back to Mr. Osborne there, and that would be uh, Bronson Ballard. Not and Mr. Ballard could not join us, I think, however, it is very important to mention the reason he could not join us is that he is our um, winner who not only won in regionals, but going on to nationals at Penn State, which is an actually outstanding wow. <laughs> uh, Stephen Grow. Is Stephen here? So your name correct correctly, uh, Colin Goodell. Yes, perfect. If I can just share that Colin um, placed first in the regional competition, which was held at Shepherd University on March 14th. So that was first out of um, 60 or 70 some students um, with our RISA 8 um, districts competing. So congratulations. Tim Joy. Tim Joy. Yeah. <laughs> 
if I can interject just one more time, when we recognize our high school students, um, we had seven students that placed within the top 15 out of, again, 70 students in the regional competition. So seven students out of 70. So that's quite an accomplishment for our district. So congratulations to me. Yeah. Daisy Levine? Levine. Levine. I knew I would get it the wrong way. But congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And Daisy is a repeat winner. Daisy has qualified for the um, state competition since she was in fourth grade. <laughs> and she has placed second. She placed second in the ninth grade competition this year. And she also placed second another year. Can you help me remember again? Fifth grade. She placed second in the state. So you can imagine that is quite an accomplishment. Congratulations. Denali? And you just pronounce your last name is Nidig. Nidig. Congratulations, Nidig. Thank you, sir. Again, Denali is one of our high school um, winners, and placed also in the top 15 in the, in the regional competition. And Britt Chadell. Congratulations. Great work. Britt placed second place in the fourth grade competition at regionals at Shepherd University. Congratulations. Andres? Andres here? Uh, <laughs> Stars. 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 Andres, another high school student who Let placed in the top 15. Andres. 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 Okay, Andres. Silas. The wise. The wise. Yes. Very good. Sorry. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Don't Thank apologize. You. It's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> and Matthew Spiker. Gotcha. Matthew is an eighth grade student who um, attends Shepherdstown Middle School and he placed second in the regional competition. And Sebastian Velosky? Face the Lofsky. Okay. <laughs> Sebastian is a seventh grade student who placed third in the regional competition. I, these are the two that are not. Robert. Robert? Barrett? Barrett? Yes. That's what I have. He's not here, and neither is uh, Mr. Okay, Robert. Barrett's not here, and then Ty Dinn's not here either. Then. Is that correct? Yeah. Did we miss anyone? <laughs> He's our golden horseshoe winner. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay. Hang on. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Just that should do it. That looks good. Now, everybody get ready to hold up your certificate loud and proud. Two, three. I'm going to do one more. One, two, three. Excellent. Looks good. And a very big thank you to our staff and all of the coaches who have worked very, very diligently with these young men and women. Uh, knowing that we have a goal of increasing our uh, Foundational math skills here in the county and uh, great programs like this are what's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Great parent support. Great parent support. <laughs> and we have our Golden Horseshoe winners. Our Golden Horseshoe folks are very very special. They have very in-depth knowledge of West Virginia. That they could probably ask us things about West Virginia that we would not be able to answer. I'll bet you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but uh, this is always a great honor. I know it takes a lot of pride in the folks that uh, learn about their home state and all. That uh, we have some state winners here, both from Harpers Ferry and Charlestown. And see if uh, Nicholas Olson from Harpers Ferry here. 
think he's coming. Okay, he's coming. How about Quinlan Keys? He's okay. <laughs> This is all the you have on here that you won for that then. Mm -hmm. well, congratulations. Why don't you go ahead and step back at the, the board table? That's great. But Evan Miller from Charlestown Middle School here. James Salmon from Charlestown Middle School. Haley Schumann from Charlestown Middle School, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up, Joshua shoot Joshua here in Carlstown well those those are our winners and say it's great work on your part very very good mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all right one two three one more one two three Okay. Thank you. Can you get one? Again, an, an enormous amount of work by the students and their parents on their own time to prepare for those competitions to do that well across the state. So very well done. Thank you. Miss Marstiller for our um, Jefferson FFA land judging team. Yes, um, I was here a couple months ago, I think it was in March, um, and we were getting ready to head off to Oklahoma for the National Land Judging and Homestead Evaluation, and we are pleased to come back with a national champion, and that would be yes. Lucas Henderson. So Out of 178 students in the nation in the home site evaluation contest. Wow. So good job. Awesome. Um, and the other team members joined in for an eighth place finish nationally. That was out of 45 teams in the home site division. And as a team, as far as the land judging section, they received 24th, and that was out of 92 teams. So they did quite well for our first time ever going out there, and I'm extremely proud of them. They worked very 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 hard there's very few teenagers that i know would spend sun up to sun down and never complain out in the field when it was hot and when it was cold and it was windy and um they didn't complain not one bit um but that's the kind of hard work it takes to do that well out there we actually judged with uh, two other teams from west virginia one of those came home as that with the national championship so we were judging among some high cal with ha some high caliber teams the whole entire week so um when we say when i say that the competition at the state level is very competitive i'm really not joking it takes a lot to get through the state just to get to go to the national contest so we are really excited to have that opportunity this year and i want to thank the board members as well as the community itself for their generosity and their support because without that we would have never been able to have a have an opportunity of a lifetime so this is earl hamby let me give them their certificates so don't forget to say that. That's a pretty hot bar to set for our first trip to nationals. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's right. Should be good. All right, one, two, three. I'm gonna do one more. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay, is that all the recognitions for tonight? Yes, sir. They are. Fantastic. We're going on to superintendent's comments, please. Uh, yes, sir. Um, my only comment, I'm very much looking forward to uh, graduation this Thursday and Friday night. Our staff has been working. And I want to say very huge thank you to the staff at Jefferson High School and Washington High School, not only preparing for graduation, but 
as always, we have a few individuals. Um, for some inexplicable reason, typically teenage boys, who <laughs> at the last moment might struggle to get over the line and they are really working very, very hard with every single one of them to get every single person across that stage and I greatly, greatly appreciate your efforts, so thank you. So, yes. Okay, is there action on approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education from May 9th, 2016? Is there a motion? So much. Second. Second. Any corrections or deletions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay. Citizens' comments. And uh, I just want to reiterate that citizens' comments are for three minutes, so please try to keep it within that time frame. Terry Young. Can you get our timing, please? Thank you for letting me speak tonight. I have something I'm very passionate about that I would like to speak on. And I, for those who don't know me, my name is Terry Young, and I'm president of Service Personnel School Service Personnel Association, in Jefferson County. Um, what I want to talk about is that um, the morale in the county has been a little bit on the low side. I'm not saying even in the dark side in this county. Um, we have a lot of strong. Um, issues on the table and I have a lot of concerns one of those we've had a lot of changes over the years um, some good some bad some that we're still getting used to and I understand that and over the years some people have come and gone jobs have come and gone um, and we're still waiting for some of those jobs to be filled um, some of those jobs have been contracted out some have not even been filled at all, I understand, for various reasons. Uh, there's still the need to fill them. There's still um, a waiting for a long time for this. Um, I would like to see that both for service and personnel, professional, that we have these jobs filled in a timely manner. What I don't want, and I'll be very blunt about it, is um, I would like to see jobs filled correctly. And when I say that, I want them to be, if it's a service job, I want a service person in that job as a professional or a professional in that job. I don't see a reasoning for if a job is done correctly by a service personnel that they should be, um, it should be moved to a professional um, position. Um, I have not had a good reasoning for this to happen and I would like, to, I would like everybody to think really hard before they do that. Um, change jobs that is on from a service to a professional um, I'm not good at word games and I don't like playing word games so I'm gonna get right to it I want to see the transparency here I want you know if it's a supervisor a principal administrator a superintendent any level they're only as good you're only as good as your team and if you can't get your team to work well under you you're not gonna look good and at the long run, who's gonna hurt? It's gonna hurt the kids. It's gonna hurt the students and their education. And we have some awesome people in this county. I wouldn't, you know, I've been here 24 years, 25 years, as subbing as well, and I keep coming back. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. It isn't for the money I'm here, we all know that. Um, but it's because I like the county, I like what we offer, I like the kids, I like the people. I think we need to go back and think as board members as elected board members you have to think about your decisions because you're thinking about the people you're thinking about the students the staff the employees of Jefferson County and you need to that's a hard job I understand that but in the long run we all know that it's all gonna hurt the kids the kids deserve to have the best education. Jefferson County can give it if we all stay on the same track. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. I appreciate very much the opportunity to talk. Um, I'm Scott Ellis. I'm the Director of Sports Medicine. Uh, for outreach and development for pivot physical therapy and I'm joined with my colleague here um, in response to the RFP for athletic training services and I am here to offer you some more insight about the opportunity to be able to provide that service for you over the next several years 
um, probably should start with the beginning because today was a budget day and I think maybe the first strong point that I will make is that our bid comes in $12,000 for two schools than what you were paying last year and we are willing to do that for three years so that's a $36 thousand uh, reduction in the amount of money for the service but most importantly we feel like we have uh, the best quality service available in the mid-atlantic region we do this uh, in 50 high schools supported um, by 115 physical therapy clinics but the most important thing and the reason why we are successful is that we understand that all of our programming is community-based we live pivot we live here we have clinics here. We know all the healthcare providers. We volunteer for your runs and your special events and your fairs. We've been doing this for a long time in your community. We just happen to be able to do that in other communities too as well. We serve Berkeley community as well. We, we have provide the athletic training service for services for those four as well. And immediately when we hire an athletic trainer, we get them into the school, we wanna make sure that they become rooted and part of that service. So they're meeting with the parents and all the parent uh, meetings, they're meeting with the coaches, they're meeting with the administration, the EMS squads to make sure that patient care is transferred on the field appropriately. The doctors are a very important link in the continuum of care. What we offer is a sports medicine program that enables us to be professional, conduct ourselves professionally, wear professional attire, take care of your kids in a way that we can get them to the appropriate doctors, into physical therapy if needed, and back onto the playing field as safely as possible. We have a numerous educational programs for coaches, coaches and for parents. Um, we actually conducted a, a, a physician education program last year at Spring Mills, and we're doing a coaching education program for coaches this year at Spring Mills, and we've invited all of your coaches to attend that, and we hope a lot of yours will already attend, regardless of the outcome of this. Uh, of this RFP. Um, I think in short, um, we're so passionate about sports medicine. Our co-founder, um, Greg Smith, he's the head athletic trainer for the Washington Capitals. It starts there. Um, our regional president is Chris Horowitz. He lives here. Um, he has clinics, you know, I mean, he, he cares for th this area. And as a regional approach, um, we care for not only Berkeley County, but also Washington County right across the river and Frederick County. And we combine these resources locally to be able to perform programs like functional movement screenings, um, where we can evaluate seven specific movements in your athlete, identify weaknesses, et cetera, and help um, preventative strategies and get your kids um, to perform better as well as keep them safe. Thank you very and much. And so thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Carissa. Horvix. Horvix, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We kind of did this in reverse. I was thinking I would go first and he would go <laughs> second. Didn't work out that way at all. But um, basically, I just wanted to give you an overview of Pivot Physical Therapy, who we are and what we do as um, in the bigger picture, other than the sports medicine side. Um, we do have five physical therapy clinics here locally. Shepherdstown is where our first location opened. And my husband, Chris Horwicks, um, who is a physical therapist as well as an athletic trainer, was very passionate about providing the best possible care for the community where we lived, where we both, well, we live together, obviously, we're married. <laughs> But we live in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, um, and he just we both saw a need in that area for excellent health care and excellent um, service to, to people who we lived around, who we worked with, and who we um, were in the community with. And so he opened that location in Shepherdstown. From the very beginning, we were extremely involved in the community. And so that um, trend in terms of being involved not only in Shepherdstown, but now we have a location in Charlestown, Hedgesville, Spring Mills, and um, Inwood. So he opened every one of those clinics on his own with his own hands and with his own time and hours. And uh, my, my children and I were in the clinics working it as well. But I guess my point being that from the very beginning, our clinics have been community-based. That's what we're about. We're about um, 
not about uh, just getting a patient in the door, but who is that patient? What are they involved in? How's that important to them? And how's that important to us? And what can we do to help them? We've been involved in every race run, health fair, everything that you can imagine. And I know overall, this is a very giving community. Most people want to be involved in what's going on. Um, but that continuum of care, not only within the community, but within the physicians around the area um, is very important to us. So as Scott mentioned, um, I'm the physician and lia physician liaison for the for the company um, for this area. So I work directly with the community community outreach as well as the athletic trainers, as well as the physical therapists, as well as the physicians that we work with. And so our goal is to create this community within Pivot, um, which includes all of us working together. So I just wanted to put your mind at ease that um, as this opportunity comes for you to make a decision on what way you're gonna go with your athletic training services in Jefferson County, we would love the opportunity to work with, um, with you and with the high schools and the student athletes at the highest professional level, um, not only with them, but also working to create that community atmosphere within the schools as well. So thank you thank very, you very much. much. Carolyn Brady. Um, my name is Carolyn Brady, and I am a parent of four children, uh, three who are at uh, South Jefferson Elementary and one at Charlestown Middle. And uh, as my oldest is entering ninth grade this fall, um, I've been more and more concerned about a safety issue. Uh, we live in the Spruce Hill neighborhood, which is just south of Washington High School, and currently there's no safe way for the students in our neighborhood as well as our sister neighborhood, Spruce Hill North, to, uh, to cross the street and to get to Washington High School. I have spoken with uh, Principal Marcus uh, concerning this and she acknowledged the, the safety issue. And currently the solution is to bus children from these two neighborhoods across the street to the high school. And I have a proposal that would hopefully save our county some money in, uh, in uh, in busing, um, as well as provide uh, a safe passage for our students. Um, uh, the one, the one problem with the current solution of busing students from these two neighborhoods is that it only addresses students who are going to and from school during regular school hours. It doesn't cover students who are uh, either going to school early or who are coming home later for sports, after school clubs, you know, other such activities, evening activities as well. And it also doesn't cover uh, families like ours. We like to go support the Washington High School sports programs, the, the soccer games, the football games. And we enjoy just walking across the street to uh, the, the wonderful sports complex there. So, um, so the, the, the concern really is not just for my own children, but for all the children in these neighborhoods, as well as us as, as families that we do have a safe way to cross. I've been in contact with uh, Ken Cloen, who is the uh, uh, District 5 traffic engineer, and he's already been out to the site and has identified a place where a, a crosswalk uh, could be installed. And they've already put up one sign, a pedestrian sign, but he says that that's not enough, that we need to have a push button flashing signal. And, uh, and that there's a program uh, through the uh, West Virginia Department of Transportation uh, called the Transportation Alternatives Program, which is a federally funded grant that will, it requires a governing a government entity such as yourselves to apply for the program uh, and to pay 20% of the cost, but then the federal grant will then cover 80% of the costs. So um, if you'd like, I have a, a map here which shows the site of the proposed crosswalk. I have copies for all of you if you'd like to see that. Um, and um, and basically just to ask for, for your help in, uh, and your uh, consideration in creating this uh, proposed crosswalk and then hopefully down the road uh, sidewalks to connect it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Schematics to Mrs. Harner there, please. Thank you, Ms. Brady. Thank you. 
this was this was this was just a novel presentation. Usually we get the complaints. <laughs> you, you provide a solution. Solution. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, novel. that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're now to consent agenda. Is there a motion? Is there any uh, amendments or anything to consent agenda? Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda as written? So moved. Second. 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 Discussion. Was there a deletion from the first? Copy that we got. It's in there for number four. It is the number five. Number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. It should be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, we are to unfinished business. Yes, sir. Under unfinished business, you'll see modification of the human resources position. On September the 28th, I originally brought to the board as a line item a request to modify the human resources coordinator position. At that time, after discussion with um, the JCSSPA and the JCEA, I withdrew that request. There was uncertainty regarding the budget. There were concerns with uh, modifying a central office administrative uh, position when there were unknowns about, quite frankly, both the budget and our intentions as an administration moving forward. Since that time, we have done several things. First of all, um, I think with regards to our intentions, we cut, we absorbed a $397,000 cut in state funding at the central office and out of administrative positions. Um, we have cut a total of $1.2 million out of our budget while adding both teaching and service positions to those and adding no administrative positions. So I think that the intent and uh, not simply intent but actual verifiable action is well documented in that. Secondary to that, in that same nine month period, we had 65 applicants for that position. We interviewed everyone who met our minimal qualifications which were 17 of those individuals. Individuals have to apply for a certain number of jobs when they are uh, qualifying for unemployment, so we would have a number of, of individuals who, um, while they had been in honorable professions, certainly had no experience whatsoever with either schools or human resources, but had applied for the position. Of those 17 applicants, we ran in a nine-month period six separate interview sessions across all of those. Um, and not a single one of those individuals, we had an eight-person panel, uh, none of them were even moved forward for exploring recommendations. Uh, they simply did not have the credentials, the background, the experience, uh, were unable to um, show the qualities that we wanted in leadership for our human resources position. It is always important. We are a people business. Over 80% of our budget is staff. And so we need someone leading that department who's both incredibly knowledgeable about the law, out of full fairness to all individuals, and making sure that they're dealt with equitably and clearly and transparently, and who is able to both research and keep themselves abreast of the latest practice in human resources. Since we are 80% people, we, our children thrive or fail based on the people who are in those positions. And so we need someone leading that team to support them and to proactively not only go out and recruit folks, but to actively retain them by working on things like employee morale, by working on things like incentive programs that they've researched and that they've worked on ways to pay for. Um, so uh, in going back from that, we contacted a number of human resource professionals, including um, two local, uh, one in Virginia, um, and one at the State Department, 
to look at our job description and to uh, be very clear about what our expectations were and what salary level and position level we would expect from that and the advisement that we received from across the board um, from individuals who had looked at the job description and had not applied themselves was that uh, we were simply asking for a professional position at far too low a salary. Even internally our own folks for a principal in our school system, anyone other than a high school principal to take this position internally, they would have been asked to work five extra weeks a year and take a nearly $10,000 pay cut. So, not surprisingly, we were unable to find someone to meet. <coughs> so, my request to the board is that we change that, modify that position to become a Chief Human Resources Officer, that it report directly to the superintendent, that it be given, uh, and it does not currently have, supervisory responsibility for the Human Resources Department. That position reports to Pat, and he maintains supervision of all the individuals in that department. Um, and that we require of this individual that they either have or that they obtain within their probationary period the Senior Human Resources Professional Certification, which is currently the highest certification level available in the professional human resources field for educational HR to be able to move our program forward. Is there a motion to modify the human resources position to chief human resource officer? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Something we have to do. We have to do it or we're not going to get anybody. And that's a, one of the most important uh, positions in this office. Got to do it. Other discussion? We've just been trying for the whole school year and have not succeeded. So for we nine have to try months, and we else. have actually gone out and personally recruited. I would love to publicly thank uh, Amy Penzarella <laughs> and other parents who have gone out and hand recruited. I myself have met individuals for lunch. I've spent some money in skippers, <laughs> taking people out to lunch, going, "You will love Jefferson County Schools." You will, and to convince someone to take a significant pay cut to come to work for us to have responsibility for, you know, now they may be a, a generalist working three levels down in the organization, have no supervisory responsibility, and I'm asking them to take a fifteen to $20,000 pay cut to come and have that level of responsibility. And I've gotten a great deal of, wow, uh, I, I see what you're trying to do, but that is, that's not possible, that is not going to happen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. New business? Ms. Schwartz. McCormick. All right. Ms. Schwartz. Bad pen handles keep showing up. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful job of writing that up, what we got to see. Oh, I have a yeah. little addendum here. <laughs> yeah, you did it outstanding. What you said to us. Yeah, it was nice to have it ahead of time. Did you get it? I sent you from the Yes. That's what this addendum includes. Mm -hmm. um, the check this year from McCormick was one hundred fifty-one thousand one hundred three one hundred and three dollars and eighty-seven cents. We had left over ten thousand eight hundred dollars and. Um, we always give 10% since the beginning of doing this to the media center. So that took out 15,110 of the 151,000. Um, we also have $1,800 in administrative costs. And then the Pays Lab, uh, we decided to reabsorb that money since it doesn't have a home, doesn't look like there's gonna be a home on the horizon. So we have the, with the caveat that hopefully someday there will be and they can reapply for that. So the total amount we had was $171,764.47. And the grants are there. Um, treadmills for Ms. Deal, um, some instruments for Mr. Lynch, uh, some tractor and implements for uh, Mr. Green and Vo Ag, um, and then a lot of computers uh, for updating the carts that are already there in two departments and to replace the computer labs in three rooms. Um, with 
cows, computers on wheels, so that those rooms could be used as classrooms, right, Mrs. Ross? Mm -hmm. And um, a kiln for uh, Ms. Eisenhart and the art department and to repair the existing kiln. Um, instruments for the Pop Singer Initiative Band uh, because they were borrowing from the regular band and sometimes their programs overlapped and that was kind of difficult to choreograph. And Mr. Glenn Denning, who um, is the auditorium czar, um, <laughs> wanted to update the audio equipment there um, to bring it up to snuff. And so that's those we wanted to uh, recommend fully. Um, well, Mr. Green and Mr. Lynch's were pared down. They weren't full. Um, they were partial grants. And then the one that came uh, to bear was uh, Miss. Ross and the student disciplinary work group um, with the incentives and I included there in the addendum that I just handed you um, I'd sent you all my concerns because of something we'd had before and I just didn't want us to have to spend a whole lot of time here tonight trying to get through that and miss or dr. Gibson um, put all that together talk to the attorney so it looks like of that grant um, only $7,500 for the field, quarterly field trips would be um, permissible under the terms of the grant. So we want to amend that a grant from $21,544.94 to $7,500. Um, with that being said, then we have... Um, a remaining amount of fourteen thousand forty four dollars and ninety four cents from that grant plus twelve thousand four hundred dollars and eighty three cents that in our haste um, to get everything divvied out we somehow missed so we have a total of twenty six thousand four hundred forty five dollars and seventy seven cents left which we would just like to open up again in the fall to people um, to, to apply for grants so those are our recommendations, and I'm if you sure have any questions, you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be seeing me again. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the recommendations for the McCormick grant? So moved. Second. 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 Discussion. Mrs. Ross, I'd like to compliment you on what you attempted to do, and I'm very sorry that we could not go that direction because as an administrator, as a building administrator, I'm sure you're always encouraged to do the type of things you're trying to do, but it's always very difficult to find the money to do. Hmm. Other discussion? Just a comment. I happen to be the board's representative to that committee, and so I sat on on the committee and listen to the discussion and all, and I really had no problem with what Ms. Ross is, is uh, or has asked for. Uh, she's concerned naturally about discipline and ways to uh, influence students <laughs> to have a little better discipline than maybe they might tend to do. and. In my mind, what she wants to do directly w would have a direct effect on discipline, and I think that's an important thing in education. And I think that if it bears on education, which this money is supposed to do, I can't see where you can say that is not a proper expense. I, I disagree with the lawyers, and I don't know whether there's any way we can work with them again and get them to get, be more specific and tell us why uh, they don't feel that this passes muster. I, I really think we should do that. And this was certainly our counsel in conjunction with the trust attorneys at BCT. Our students didn't simply read this. They went to the trust attorneys at BCT and they went through the terms of the trust and I think probably their greatest concern is preserving the tax status of the trust as it is. If they were to interpret things that were then found by the IRS or someone else to be too close to a line, they could jeopardize the, the tax exempt status of that grant and they don't wish to do that. I certainly agree with you completely in that Ms. Ross has worked 
uh, done an amazing job with the staff at JHS. They are working to actively reduce their discipline, and I applaud the positive and supportive ways in which they're doing it. We simply have to find another another funding source. McCormick's not the only way to do that. That's our responsibility. Once they do their work of coming up with good programs, well-vetted programs, they research them, they talk to their faculty and to their parents, and they find a good way, her job is done. Our job is to help her pay for it, and that's that's our responsibility. And if McCormick can't do it, I'm not going to jeopardize that funding source because of it. We will find another way to work through that. It may not be at the same level or as robust, but we'll find a way. Well, I, and I agree with you on that 100%. But it just seems to me that we ought to maybe at least query the IRS and, and get their take on it. They might have a different take. They may not, but they may. It's worth looking yes, at. Sir. If that's a request to the board, I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. I would just say uh, I would love to see that phase lab. Um, having seen it in other counties, it's just extremely disappointing to me. I just wish. I mean, I know it's going to be so overcrowded and so ridiculous at that high school um, next year. I mean, my kids go there, so I can speak to it. Um, but, you know, it's one, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know. But for one for three it's, years. I, I, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, don't, we're not going to even say it can't happen. Just figure out how it has to happen and put it there. So, you know, because it's it just seems ironic to me that what the total is that's left almost exactly pays for that pay slab. So, I mean, I would hope that they would at least somehow have an opportunity to, you know, possibly have and first. That's what I told have first that. And that's what we voted at the committee that, you know, just now we couldn't just keep tying that money up. But yeah. definitely, if there was a way, I mean, everybody was for it. We all wanted it to happen. Yeah. But we just could never settle on a place by the discussion we looked at looked at a lot of ways to get it in and it just didn't work out unfortunately mrs schwartz and mrs ross we both thank both of you for all your hard work on this all those in favor say aye aye opposed no motion carried thanks thank you Next new business item is modification of secretary three position into an accountant three position. Um, tonight I come before the board to request a reclassification of the current position in the finance department. I want to start out by recognizing the finance leadership team, uh, Peggy Smith and Teresa Fagans. Um, we spent a lot of work on gathering data uh, for this position. The history of it, um, or our objective was how and what do we need today and going forward in the finance department. And how do we do that um, with looming budget cuts and increasing demands. I did give the board a two-page uh, summary and I won't go over it in, e in detail but I will tell you that um, both Peggy, Teresa and myself spent about two hours additional a day over the last six weeks. Um, one in reviewing in detail the specific position that left um, and two, uh, supporting payroll and getting payroll processed over the last three payrolls. When we looked at it, um, things have really changed in the past 10 years. Um, and the only way we can meet those demands are through technology and automation. Um, and not by choice, uh, it's a demand. Uh, we, we don't have ledgers anymore. Um, we don't really key data anymore, but most of the information that we deal with is extracting and um, compiling and analyzing. And anybody who knows what WEVIS is, what West Virginia Educational Information System, um, <coughs> even seven years ago, you couldn't import and export data out of that system. 
In a nutshell, we also have three, 50% of my staff um, in two months will be eligible for retirement. Will they retire? They may, they may not. They will be eligible to retire. As a system as a whole, we have 26% of our employees that have 20 years or more experience. Um, and that's 26% of our entire school system population. What we did over the past six weeks is we, we looked in depth at the position that was leaving. Um, this position was a 261 day service position um, and was modified five years ago. Uh, it was reposted as a service position and the days were reduced by 225 days. Uh, when looking at that position, what we found was uh, it, it takes a lot of time to key a lot of information and supplemental pay and the type of pays and the number of keystrokes that it takes to do that. So we uh, took up a collection between the three of us and sent $35 worth of cookies to the State Department programmer and asked her to assist us with importing some of our payroll information. Currently, Lincoln County has bought um, an interface module to do that, and they're doing it on a very limited basis. So within six weeks, primarily Peggy Smith, who has um, a more technical skill set, has worked with the programmer at the state level, and we are now importing three aspects of our payroll um, into Weavis. And I gave you the example um, of those keystrokes and the difference it, and that's just one example but what it really did for finance and the leadership team is it, it, it opened our eyes uh, for what we really need and um, and technology is the area that we need support um, and we have I have we as a team have a wonderful team in finance and they're made up of many strengths and weaknesses and we work together to get what we need done and, and to make that happen. In moving in a direction for the future, what we really need is to reclassify the current 225 day service position to a half time professional position with the qualifications to include a four year bachelor's degree, uh, preferred major in accounting, um, preferred CPA, and a preferred minor in computer information systems or and some type of programming. Um, this position, uh, hopefully, well, this position would report to me, and we would also like to see uh, some experience in data extraction, report design, electronic re reconciliation. Um, cost effectiveness, it, it does save us money. Uh, the skill set will also, in the long run, in the short run, save us man hours. And those always can't be cost savings with cash. But what they will do is save time. So after we looked within the payroll area of finance, we expanded that um, research into our entire department. And then we took it one step further and we, we crossed the department lines and we reached out to other departments so that at the same time that we're automating, we could also logically align some of those duties that have um, for lack of a better word, probably just resided in those areas because the manpower was available to do it. Um, and I quoted those numbers also for you. Currently, the Transportation Department, we have an employee who spends 16 hours of payroll, and we have 24 payrolls, uh, providing payroll for bus operators, mechanics, and the Transportation Administrative Department. Uh, he spends 8,200 in straight time or 16 in overtime. Because we have a, a transportation shortage in bus operators, he tends to be pulled to drive a bus, which leaves his day for admin and his responsibilities uh, generally running into overtime. 
we would migrate or transition those responsibilities into this new position, which will no longer be a keen of payroll. It will actually be a more sophisticated importing of payroll. And even though there are a lot of automations and a lot of automation and a lot of savings when you go um, technical, there is a different skill set. So for example, when technology does a server upgrade, if you have a lot of things that point in queries and extract data, you have to go back and change everything that you, you've done. We just learned that a couple weeks ago when none of our queries worked. Um, so there is some housekeeping and there is some maintenance that uh, you do still have to perform in, uh, once you automate. In addition, we looked at um, our Human Resources Benefits Department. Currently, uh, Shelby Todd spends two hours a week collecting insurance payments for our retirees and our leave of absence employees. Um, this position would also transition um, that responsibility into finance. And um, although there would be no cash savings in the benefits area, it would free up her time to work on competing priorities and especially um, the demands of affordable health care and the reporting requirements for administering um, that benefit. We did put some data together. Um, one, just because we felt like we wanted to know those um, specific answers. I will tell you that the number of employees, service, and professional is reversed. I apologize. So if you wanted to flip to the bottom of your second or back page, the third one down where it says number of employees, service, it should say professional, and the one after that that says number of employees, professional, should say service. And I'll, I'll just highlight those. Um, we currently um, are down one position or even. That um, the footnote on the professional that was reduced was a purchasing agent that Jefferson County Schools had in 2007. That position was uh, eliminated and not refilled. The majority of that responsibility transitioned into finance and believe it or not, Assistant Superintendent uh, Mr. Dingus. So where Ralph does the majority of purchasing and contracts in our school system, he does come to our office for support in meeting those requirements. Having um, the retainer fee for an attorney has assisted us in getting those answers in a, um, a cost-effective way and pretty quickly. Um, I also want to note that both our service positions and our professional positions from fiscal year 7 to our current fiscal year 17, the data pulled from our uh, preliminary and final comps that the State Department puts out and is what our funding is um, decided or um, calculated upon. Um, that over the past 10 years, we've grown by 96 or 16 percent professionals and 61 or 15 percent service positions. I thought the total budget was kind of interesting. You know, I didn't look at too much detail. I know um, Peggy and I were kind of amazed at the growth over a 10-year period of the $26.6 .6 million. And then there's your student um, data, Mrs. Ogden, that you were asking about earlier. Um, the P-Card program we rolled out in 2010, we hit our high hitters for rebates um, over the past few years and recently part of um, my goal with um, Dr. Gibson was to roll that P-Card out uh, to all of our employees. The 364 are the number of accounts that need to be reconciled. And the P-Card and banking um, are a good example of where finance has had to transition. And that is more in compliance and auditing. So we're rolling a P-Card program out, which um, has a significant benefit, particularly to our teachers, to be allowed to use a credit card to purchase their supplies for their offices. But it also um, 
even though the state provides fraud moni monitoring, it's a skill set for learning compliance querying and auditing so that we can tailor that fraud um, compliance and monitoring to our specific um, county. So with that said, over 10 years to not do anything but decrease in one staff, um, I, I do want to say that very, I am very passionate about this is the direction that the finance ha department has to go. And I will also say that um, the service classifications, not just in Jefferson County, but with, within the state of West Virginia, are, are behind the times in meeting the demands of not just a modern finance department, um, the skill set that we need across our system, mechanics. Um, the, the pay scale and the skill set really don't match the quality that we already have or where we need uh, to go. I did, with uh, the help of um, both Peggy and Teresa, we did call the State Department and uh, there is on the professional scale there a third class scale and a second class scale that would allow us to post a professional position and we do have occupational therapist and speech assistants on that scale. It's a professional scale that requires um, no degree but a license or a, I think maybe a two-year degree and a license to be placed on that professional scale. scale. Uh, we did, as a first option, pursue that through our attorney, uh, wanting possibly a junior accountant classification that would be a step or a bridge between a secretary three, accountant three service classification and a senior accountant, which is what both Peggy and um, Teresa are classified on a full scale, professional scale as an option. Um, currently it's not an option by West Virginia Code, even though a two-year degree and we have, uh, I think, 60 to 80 service uh, positions in our school system that um, have an associate's degree or greater um, that would be eligible at least um, to step into that position and be groomed from a junior accountant uh, or from a senior accountant. Um, the both the state level and um, the attorney said that the code is not accommodate even though it's a two-year certificate it's not a license to be able to perform those um, that or that function cannot be on, on a professional scale I did contact the State Department and um, we're in the process of writing a request to say that we really need not just in the Finance Department but across um, our county and all of the counties, um, our state department to look and work with our associations to start meeting those um, demands. Any questions? Is there a motion to modify the present 225-day uh, contract service personnel secretary three accountant three to a half-time 261-day contract professional personnel senior accountant. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. I have a question. Okay. And I may have missed something along the way, but are these current positions and people that are in this position that you're attempting to reclassify to this other, to professional 261, or is it a new position that you're going to be hiring? This position mm -hmm. is a, it was a 225 day service position, full time, um, with the classification secretary three slash accountant three, mm -hmm. and that person transitioned into our child nutrition department. So the good news is she's still with our system because she's one of the best. Um, but I am asking instead of reposting that position at a full-time 225-day service position to reclassify that and post it at a half-time 
261 day professional senior accountant position. Okay, so right now it's a vacant Correct. spot in your department. Okay, Correct. that clarifies a few things because if you were going to take a um, you know secretary three accountant three and change them to a yeah. CPA requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. The only concern I have about this is if we okay this tonight that next year we're back at the same place and we ask for this to be a full time position and then it's not a savings to us anymore. That's my concern. Um and I understand that concern and certainly we've added two additional checks and we've had child care benefits and we've had many benefits added. So at, as of today, I would say that there is no plan that these efficiencies and this position will allow us also to continue that automation process. So there are six, six different classifications on keen timesheets. We're gonna continue to do that. Um, if there was a need, and I can tell you that the Jefferson leadership team has gone to every position, not only in finance, but across the entire system, that that in-depth evaluation be done um, when somebody leaves or as additional responsibilities are transitioned, um, that we review that in detail and um, if I came back for an additional position, it would have this evaluation done and it would give you specific items that were transitioned into this department or my department in order to request it. And you should require that. You shouldn't just give me a half-time position without that evaluation. I don't have any plans on doing that um, now or in the future as far as this evaluation we've looked both short term and long term and accommodating that growth over the next three to five years is is doable um only with the automation discussion so part of the proposal just so i understand it clearly though is with this position you would then absorb the transportation costs and the human resources costs as well that's correct <clears throat> or save time that and it's this position is not doing everything there's been a redistribution of workload within the entire finance department in order to accommodate those additional responsibilities question all those in favor say aye 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 Opposed, no? No. Motion carries. Executive session, will we need one? Yes, sir, we will require an executive session for personnel and I anticipate that the board will take action once we come back into public session. Can we take a five minute recess at this time? <coughs>